in Finland, what was the name again? They sure. lived here in Worcester. I mean, they're well, well. Oh. Anyway. Boy, in our cellar? Daughter. I'll bet it's all filled up. Yeah, and did a lot of interviews. Uh -huh. The best one was the so guy who was 94 right. years old but that no was in World War I. Huh. It's in Bolotov. Really he lived in Bolotov. Yeah, he was uh, good at The it. humidity. Just we put, we I mean, you know, somewhat this. Two new ones. Okay, okay, hey, we're we're getting ready. Oh. Okay. Okay. We're ready? Yep, all right. Today is uh, July 21st, 2021. And uh, we have the pleasure of speaking with uh, Burton Bjornstrom uh, today in the library at the uh, Finnish Hall in Canterbury. My name is Saul Ahola, and I'm here with Steve Koop, who's uh, running the recording equipment. And we're assisted by Sue Koop and Sandra Ahola. We're all members of the uh, Finnish American uh, Heritage Society, and uh, this interview is being conducted as part of our oral interviews project. I'll be conducting the interview, uh, but would appreciate help from Steve, Sandra, and Sue as we go along. Um, when we were trying to decide who uh, would do the interview, I was happy to uh, volunteer to interview Bert because I knew that um, Bert had a lot of good stories and uh, that I really probably wouldn't have to do too much prying in order to get him to talk. <laughs> so um, we're uh, all looking forward to learning more about Bert's life story. Um, so maybe we should start at the beginning, Bert. Um, your origins, uh, your birth, where you were born, your family background, okay. uh, your siblings, um, where your parents and grandparents uh, originated in, in Finland, if they were born there, mm -hmm. and um, how your family came to uh, be in northeastern Connecticut. Maybe okay. you can start with you. Yeah. Well, from my own family history, on my mother's side, uh, there was a, uh, a captain, a sea captain, uh, that lived there back then, like my great-great-great, or whatever it was, grandfather. And he was, uh, and the Tsar of Russia, came to Finland at one point, and of course that was part of Russia then, and uh, he um, went on my, great my grandfather's ship and actually gave my great-grandfather a watch from the Tsar with the uh, Imperial Russian crest on it. He used to pass watches out to a lot of people and he gave my, and I have that now. My mother went to Finland and got it from her brother and and uh, it's given to me anyway but uh, he was a captain and also uh, la later on di different grandparents uh, were living in, uh, in Tikhokovsky, Finland during the war with Russia and uh, there was a uh, arms factory and he was a, my grandfather was the head of the barrel manufacturing company in, in Tikhokovsky, Finland and uh, so that was on my mother's side and then during the Is war, that gun, gun barrels? Or? Gun barrels. The, the Russian rifles. They yeah. would replace the right barrels, and he was working. He was the boss in the barrel. People, you know, uh, fabric. Anyway, so uh, he. Uh, th then my mother was living in Helsinki at the time of the war when the Germans came to help fight the Civil War. Now this is the Civil War, and not not the uh, World War Two. And uh, so uh, she remembered that uh, they were looking out the window as the German troops walked back and forth in Helsinki, uh, and uh, and the Germans yelled at them, Rauskinder, Rauskinder. So the kids didn't know what to do, and somebody fired at the window at their apartment, second floor. Okay, and of course then they ran away and the, hid, the kids hid. They didn't get hit, and. Uh, <laughs> and so we went to visit in 1978, I guess, or one year we went there to visit, and we went on the same street. And uh, it's on the same street where that church is, that's buried in the stones, you know, that mm -hmm. church there? That same yeah. street. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, bullet hole is still there in the wall. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody knows what it is, but I do, because my mother said so. And uh, so anyway, that's, that's uh, on my mother's side. My father 
was in the Civil War in Finland on the losing side. And he was put in prison at the Suomi Sari, Sari you know, the uh, prison they had there. And he was there for uh, like six months and they finally let him out. But there was many of them died from starvation and, you know, got shot by the guards and everything. So after the Civil War was over, when they released the old people, it was dangerous for them to go home because they had enemies. You know, there was there was a civil war. So he got on a German ship and sailed the ocean for two years on a German ship as an oiler down in the, the hull. And finally the ship came to New York, Brooklyn, and uh, well, New York anyway. And uh, he was able to go to Fintown in Brooklyn and, the, and they was able to help him go to the uh, consulate and he got political asylum because of the, the, you know, it was dangerous to go back home because they were getting murdered, you know, the, uh, the rebels, like my father was. And so he, uh, he was able to come here and stay here. And, and uh, I guess he got to be a citizen, you know. And uh, then when he went back to Finland, he met my mother. At the obvious amount of, you know, the, the statue there with the fountain. Mm -hmm. you know, that's where he met her. In the market, near the market. It, yes, yeah. And, uh, and so anyway, uh, he, uh, he, she got pregnant and then uh, he went back home and then she came. And uh, she had a little trouble at Ellis Island because they thought it was sick. No, he said, I'm not sick, I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's how they, that's how they came here anyway. They lived in Brooklyn, New York, in Sunset Park. And uh, then we went back to Finland, figuring that maybe they'd be stay there, and then they didn't like it, so they came back, and then they moved to the Bronx, New York. And then my one of my brothers was born in Brooklyn, the other brother was born in the Bronx, you know, and, and, one of, and when they were in Finland, the other brother was born. So one of my brothers is a real Finn, <laughs> you know, bought the, born there. Anyways, uh, but they're all gone now. And uh, so they finally moved from the Bronx to uh, a town in Reading, Connecticut, a little Swedish Finnish town there, uh, Georgetown, Reading, Connecticut. And there were a lot of Swedish Finns there. And uh, so they was friend, and that's where I was born. I was born in Norwalk, Connecticut, right near there, in 1937. And uh, we lived there quite a while, I guess, because in 1943, my my father, during the war there, uh, 40, in the 40s, uh, he would come from Brooklyn, New York. He was the manager of one of the buildings there on Sunset Park. And he would come to Canterbury because he had a friend in Canterbury that he used to know in New York. And he would come and help build the chicken coop and the sauna on the side of the road on 169. and uh, and. Uh, uh, so uh, we got to find out about this area here. My father did, I mean. Yeah. So in 1943, my father bought a farm in Central Village and started to farm. You know, all Finns want to be farmers. They all, that's just in the natural blood, I guess. You know, they want to grow stuff. <laughs> so we had chickens and we had a pig and we had uh, uh, strawberries and cucumbers and, you know, all that market stuff and it was nice well, I grew up that way on the farm and I put a sign out by the door my friend used to call me Duke I wrote Duke's poultry farm on the little sign <laughs> it weren't really mine it was my father's but anyway how old were you when um, they moved to uh, Central Village uh, I was six I spent half a year in Reading Connecticut school and half a year in Central Village and uh, first grade yeah first grade and, uh, and I spent the whole eight years in Central Village Grammar School, and that was a wonderful time. And just to add to this, we're going, I'm going to the Veterans Coffee House over in Plainfield, and I'm sitting there with two of my kids that I grew up with in Central Village in the Grammar School. <laughs> Veterans, you know. Yeah. yeah, it's wonderful to do that. Anyway, that's something beside. So, you know, my father had chickens, and we had that. He was a carpenter. In Finland, he learned to be a saw, you know, a saw blade man. You know how they straighten the saw blades out with the mm -hmm. hammers and they was to sharpen them. And uh, he did that in Finland. 
But when it came to Brooklyn, New York, there wasn't much call for that, you know. So he started to join the carpenters over there, and he started to learn how to build houses and all that stuff. So that's what he did the rest of his life, you know. And uh, so uh, we lived in Central Village there, and they were in the war, and after, the, you know, and they were, you know, it's a funny thing, and my mother was so nervous about the war because I guess she experienced it in Finland with the Russians and all that during the Civil War. And uh, she would build one of them bomb shelters on the side of our house. You know, you could go in the cellar because we never used it to keep the, we used to keep vegetables in there. <laughs> you know, but it was a bomb shelter. Yeah, well, how many people did that? I don't too many, but anyway. And so, uh, I don't know, my folks joined, because uh, my father was in the Civil War uh, on, the, on the socialist side, you know, but when he came to this country, he denounced that. He did not want to be in that, uh, you know, category. Matter of fact, he joined the Republican Party, how's that? <laughs> and so, and so am I a Republican. And, uh, you know, it, you know, Attila the Hun, well, I'm a little bit further to the right than t t Attila the Hun yeah. was, you know, yeah. when it comes to that. Because in, in uh, Finland, he was a, a red. Yes, absolutely, uh, yeah. He was on the losing yeah, side of the, the whites, world. The whites. Uh, the whites and the reds, yeah. yeah. He was yeah. on the Red Army. And I'll tell you the truth now. This is uh, uh, something that happened when I was a kid. My father used to, on Friday night, he used to buy a half pint of uh, whiskey sometimes, and he would uh, get a little silly, you know, and talkative. And uh, one time down in the cellar, he called me down there, and he was working, he was a wood carver, you know, he used to carve those pictures. And he was working down there, and he had a few drinks, I guess, and he told me that, that when he was in the Civil, in the Civil War, which they called the boys, he called it the boys, you know, that, that, that were fighting. The Reds, and he said that we went into the factory and rounded up all of the bosses and uh, took them upstairs and uh, forced them into the uh, elevator, uh, opened the elevator and forced them down into the shaft of the elevator and lowered the elevator on the bosses hmm. and made pomo vina. Pomo Vina, you know what Pomo is, boss wine, hmm? you know, that's what he told me down in the cellar, and I'm thinking about, he's drunk, he don't know what the hell he's talking about, so it never, it didn't register with me until I started to read about the Civil War and all that. He went in there and killed the bosses, him mm -hmm. and his, his crew, the boys, and you know, and it must have been in his weight on him all these years and never told anybody. Mm -hmm. Then he tells his son, and the son just says, "You must be drunk." Yeah. <laughs> you know? There were a lot of atrocities during those. That's uh, what happens on so, both on both sides. On both sides, yes. And so anyway, so my father actually helped kill people, and uh, you know, in in the Civil War in Finland. But he denounced that all. He did not want to be part of the socialist thing anymore. I guess he had enough, and uh, he managed to survive the imprisonment, which a lot of people did not. Survive. As a matter of fact, I think there was 10,000, and in the end, there was only 2,000 left. You know, that were alive, that were re released after six months. You know what happened? It was a hue and cry of the world. Everybody was hollering at Finland, those, you know, to take care of, the, let the rebels be. You know, like we did. We just let here, here's your horse, go home. You know, and it was okay after our civil war. And uh, so anyway, so that's the part of my family. And my father had a good job here in America, and we belonged to the Finn Hall. I came here as a kid. I loved it here, you know. And uh, as a teenager, I don't know, I guess I'm advancing fast, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, we used to come here to all the games when the Finns were here. We had games, you know, sack races. You had the bean bags rolling through the things. It was a wonderful place to come. What was the um, uh, organization at that time? Was it Sampo? Uh, it was Sampo? the Osasto. 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 You know, it's the uh, it was the uh, socialist. This was the socialist mm -hmm. all. You know that. So, so your um, your father would come. Nevertheless, he 
Yeah, he would come to the Finn Hall because it was a Finn Hall. Because there was no such a yeah. thing as he didn't get involved. He didn't get involved you know, in the politics. So. You know, they haven't gotten away from that. It, it was originally, a, you know, a farmer's organization, then converted to the socialist organization and belonged to the National Socialist Party and everything else. But the people that were here, well, they were not socialist. They were, you know, who the hell is going to sit there and say, you know, you got to share your world and all that. They did do things. They brought stuff to the people on strike sometimes, food, you know, the farmers did. You know, but there was really no big socialist thing here. I was president of the Canterbury Cultural Club. Now, the, uh, the people that were head of it was, uh, uh, I can't think of their name now, but uh, anyway, it was uh, Ruth, D Ruth Dillman, you know, her, Dillman was the head of the uh, Canterbury Cultural Club. And they had been in California back in the early days, and they were a member of the Communist Party up there. And then they came back to Can Canterbury and settled there. And, uh, and you know, they, didn't, they weren't socialists. They didn't say anything. We had a cultural, cultural club. We did dancing. We are singing group. What the heck did we do? Nothing. I was actually president. I was I conduct the meetings. I was only 18 years old or something like that, you know. But uh, the, uh, so you know, it was a wonderful place for me here as a kid growing up. And uh, I thought that everywhere we went, you know, like we go to Moose Up to the grain store, they're all thin there, you know. We go to Danielson to the grain store, all thin, you know. I thought everybody was Finnish, you know, <laughs> at one point, you know. <laughs> and. Uh, did but, you go to school in Central Village? Yes, I went right? to grammar school in Central Village. Yeah. All right. When, and, I went, when we got to eighth grade, I went to Putnam Technical School uh -huh. and learned to be a machinist. Well, there weren't that many Finns in Putnam, but there were probably quite a few Finns in Central Village. There were some. The Artie Westenen was one. He was a local character. Everybody loved him, Artie Westenen. And uh, I, I went to buy his cemetery the other day when I went down there. And, uh, and there were several other, Ricola, and there was uh, there were several, and uh, right on our street, Luoma was on our street, mm -hmm. on the dirt road where we lived, and uh, and us, and so there were a few, and they had a bakery in Central Village, uh, yeah, uh, one time, Sitonen Bakery, and uh, and then you know Finns all the way around here, moose up everywhere, you know, so. Uh, but uh, it was a wonderful place to grow up and, uh, and be in the Finn Hall. And one of the things that I got to want to point out is uh, the, on Thursday night at the Finn Hall here, during the period when I was a teenager, there was uh, a group of musicians, Toibo Eronen and some others that played instruments. And they would come here on Thursday night and just play and jam, what they call jam session, you know? And they would play music. Well, I, start, I found out about it and I asked my mother, because I didn't drive there, I was still, you know, a teenager. And uh, I asked her to bring me to the hall. So she would bring me to the hall on Thursday night and then go back home. And I stayed there for a couple hours, listened to the music, and they were just fantastic. You know, Toivo would play this violin and the others accordion and stuff. And one day, one of the Finns, said to me, called me up and said, come here, and they handed me a brand new harmonica. Mm -hmm. And the guy said, uh, you know, you got to blow in the hole and then, you know, blow in, you know, they, they try to tell me how to play the harmonica. Well, you know, and then he says, next week I want to hear some music. You know, so I get home and I'm practicing and practicing and stuff. And I got so I could do something, you know. So the next week I went and I played a little tune or something. And so I learned how to play. And now I play a harmonica like an accordion. I play with the rhythm like an accordion has, you know. And hardly anybody ever does that. Matter of fact, that mm -hmm. one, one real good accordion player said, I can't do that. He plays the blues stuff, you know, how you... But he said, I, I can't play like that. But anyway, so I really enjoy uh, uh, playing that way, you know, like they taught me here at the Finn Hall. Well, I think uh, um, uh, I saw where uh, you were also involved in some of the plays that were produced. Oh, I was! In oh, fact, yeah! Oh, in yeah. fact, maybe behind you, is that? Oh, yeah! Uh, I was in the I calm yourself. We have some, 
Memories at sea. Yeah, memories at sea. Yeah, out yeah. there. Calm yourself. You were a, you were a you were a sailor. A sailor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And 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 uh, uh, the guy said I was a young whippersnapper in in the uh, calm yourself. Mm -hmm. You know. Was that in the day of uh, of uh, Noni Lassala, when she was uh, who? Uh, Noni Lassala. Oh yeah, no, she no no they that, uh, that no, came later? no that no no we had uh, Ruth Dillman Ruth uh, Rautio who uh, was uh, where oh leader. Ruth Rautio yeah, yeah she was our leader yeah they they were already gone yeah, yeah okay they, yeah they, the others uh, and uh, no it was uh, Ruth Ruth Rautio or yeah. you know whatever and, and uh, she that's was uh, June Lisa's sister yeah yeah that's right sister yeah, yeah. yeah. so anyway so that's. Uh, yeah, I was involved in all these things in the hall here, and uh, and very active, and 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 I really enjoyed it. And then, of course, as I got older, I, you know, you drift away from uh, that kind of stuff. But uh, I, I really appreciate the old Finn that taught me how to play my harmonica because it's brought me a wonderful joy over the years. You know, uh, playing. Matter of fact, you know, our guy that plays here at the Finn Hall, this, uh, what's his name? Mike. Mike. Yeah, Mike Kotowski. Yeah, he yeah. came over the, uh, a couple weeks ago. He brought me, he picked me up at the garage and bring me home, and he had his accordion with him. He asked the guy in the garage, he said, I got an accordion, you want to hear? We were in a garage there, and he's playing accordion in the garage, and the mechanic is sitting there, and then, you know, finally I kept telling him, hey, listen, he's got to work on cars, you know. But finally he <laughs> left and brought me home. And then we went in my cellar, because nice and cool down there. And he was playing, and I played my harmonica, and we played together. And I want to tell you something, it was wonderful for me, because he's a good accordion player. Well, the two of you need to get together and go back to that garage. That's what he said. And put a little uh, show what, on for him there. That's what he said. He said, we got to do it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I only play from memory. I don't, I don't yeah. know how to read music or anything, you know. He's trying to teach me how to play a song, and I said, no, there's no yeah. way. There's no way. I said, if I don't have it on the recording in my head, I don't know how to yeah. play it. Yeah. And uh, so that's it, anyway. But it, it, I, I'd say for the Finn Hall there, that, that them guys, them old musicians that used to come on Thursday, they really helped me and, uh, and um, gave me something that I carried through my whole life, you know, even in the Army and everything, you know. Yeah. But you know the thing did, is... Did you come to dances? Um, Hmm? Did you come to dances at the uh, oh, at yeah, the hall? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, my wife and I we used to always come to the Finn dances. Cause now we're getting a little rough to dance, you know. <laughs> you hardly can walk anymore. You know, my <laughs> yeah. yeah. So anyway, but no, I appreciate that the early days. And then there was a period where I didn't come anymore. And then uh, at the Finn hall. And then of course we had that sort of re revolution there where. Sambo. Uh, yeah, tell us about that. Uh, how um, okay. how uh, Foz came into being? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Um, the Osasto ended up wanting to sell the hall. Now, Eddie, Kib uh, uh, not Eddie, uh, John Kibela mm -hmm. was a, a member of the Osasto, and uh, I don't think he was an officer, but he was a member, and his wife too, Joy. And uh, so anyhow, I, I got a phone call and somebody told, oh, it was John that called me. And he said that they're going to sell the Finn Hall, the also stuff. I said, Jesus, you can't sell the Finn Hall. This is an institution, you know, here with it. So uh, I, I really got upset. So I called John back and said, isn't there something we can do? He said, no, nope, they got their mind made up. They're going to sell it. So I said, well, damn it, i got to do something about this. So I put an ad in the paper, because I found out when the, when the date was that they were going to uh, meet with the buyer, which was the uh, Vasa Club in, over in uh, Woodstock. And uh, so I put in the paper, those people willing uh, would like to uh, save the finish off from being sold, attend a meeting at 7 o'clock on Wednesday, or whatever it was, you know. I don't remember the date exactly, but I put an ad in the Norwich Bulls about it. Well, they had the meeting, and we all showed up. Probably ten people, maybe more. I don't remember. I know that the Hutas were there. One of them, yeah. 
And there were people there I never saw again, you know, that came, young Finns. And we were out there, and I was inside the hall, and uh, finally somebody said, well, we're going to have a meeting, you're going to have to leave. I said, well, you're going to have to throw me out. I said, mm -hmm, because I'm not leaving. And so finally John had to come because he says, listen, we don't want any blood on the floor. You know, you better go out. So I went outside. So we're sitting on the porch of the Finn Hall, and uh, out there, and the steps. They had save the hall, you know, save the hall, and we're all that shit. You know, you would for a rally. The same thing. Yeah, so I, you were a revolutionary at that Yeah, at no, that that, that's the kind of revolutionary I was. So anyway, so uh, uh, finally the Swedes from the Yavasa Club said to the guys that, of the Osasco, why are you trying to sell a hall if you got people outside on the porch that want to save the place? They, you know. And, and they said, well, they never came around before. They, you know, why weren't they here when we needed them and all that stuff? And which is a legitimate answer, I agree. But uh, anyway, the Swedes stood up and walked out. They said, to hell with you guys. You know, they walked out, the Swedes did. And, and you know, I was really proud of them. Because <laughs> I got a Swedish name anyway, you know. <laughs> so anyhow. They, uh, so they, they backed out of it, you know, the whole idea, because it, it, we were out there on the porch uh, yelling. So anyway, finally the Osasco members relented and said, okay, we'll, we'll open up the memberships again. So we, what we did then was it, we, we formed the, there was still the, uh, the uh, Osasco, but then when we took over, 